Hi, I wanted to do a quick follow-up video to another video that I did previously on PostgreSQL TimescaleDB, time DB and Node.js. So in the previous video, what I talked about was essentially if you wanted to get Postgres setting up uh, or set up locally, so if you want to run it and be able to query off of uh, Node.js. In this video, what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about um, how you'd use a relational database with Node.js, how do relational databases work, and how do you query them. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take you over here and show you this uh, uh, this program I have. It's called Table Plus. And what this does is it lets you connect to a uh, Postgres uh, database. And so right now I'm connected up to one that I've already set, it up, set up here. And what I want to do right now is I'm just going to show you that I already have some tables created. And so the way that tables work inside of uh, Postgres is that a table has columns in it. And in each of those columns you can store essentially a different field or, uh, or yeah, essentially a field. Uh, think of a column as like being a field. And then for each row, that's essentially it's a different record. And so if I come over here and I select this person, this is one that I just created. Uh, this shows the, the definition here. But if I want to query that, uh, I've got a couple columns on there I can query off of. There's a first name, there's a last name, that sort of thing. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to start typing in Select, I'm going to say star from my person table, just like that. Now, if I come here and run this, it shows that I have uh, three records I've already created. And it's showing that I've got all these different IDs here. So one of the things you can do with SQL, it's kind of nice, is if you don't want to pull back every single uh, column, you just let's say, maybe you just want the first name and the last name, what I can do is I can come over here and I can say, first name, last name. And if I go to run that query, now it's just returning me the first name and last name. And let's say I only want to return people with the last name of Smith. I can go over here and I can add a where clause to that. And I can say uh, last name is equal to Smith. So, so far, pretty simple stuff like that. Now, the real power of these uh, relational databases comes in the ability to be able to query multiple tables at the same time. And so what I want to do is I want to create a, a user table that I can use to essentially store, um, let's say, username values for a person. And so if I wanted to, I could have created another column to store the username, but I want to really want to keep that separate. And I'll show you the reason why. So. I've got all these people here that I already have in my my person table, and now what I want to do is I want to create a uh, I want to create uh, a user table that can store that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to copy. I'm cheating here. I'm copying a a create table statement. So what this is doing, this is actually creating a. Let's see if I can blow that up a little bit. This is creating a new table called user underscore t. And the reason why I'm calling it underscore t here is because uh, user is a reserved word in uh, Postgres. And what I've done here is I've defined an ID. Uh, I'm making it the primary key. Uh, I'm also uh, defining, defining a column for the username. Uh, I'm also creating one here for a password hash if I want to use this for a login system. Uh, and then I am creating a person underscore ID column. What this is doing, this is actually keeping a rep, we're gonna use this as a store of reference back to the person table. So if I come in here and I add records to user T, I can reference back the original uh, person user, and I can also get information that way. Uh, I'm also creating create date and active on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And I got an error because it already exists. So let's. Let's go ahead and start over from scratch. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say drop table user underscore T. Let's run that. Okay, that's dropped our table. So now let's go and recreate that table. All right, create a table. And I'm going to create an index here on the username. And this is, makes it easier. If I want to search off the username, I can do this. Okay, so now I've done that. Now we've got our table. And if I come over here and I can say 
select star from user underscore T. If I go and run this, there's nothing in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a record in here. And the way I can do that is by using an insert into statement here. So I'm going to come right over here and say insert into user T. And I'm just going to put in a username, a password, and then a person ID. I'm going to point back to uh, this fill white that was in here. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. All right, and so now I have added that record. So now if I come back here and I say select username from user underscore T. Now I actually get that username back. So what I really want to be able to do is I want to be able to query the person table and relate back to this user table so that I can get the username. So let's say I have the, let's go ahead and let's query the, this user or just query, uh, we'll say the first name, last name from the person. And now what I want to do is I want to add a username. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to type in username. Well, there's no username in the person table, but I know there is one in the, uh, in the user T table. So if I come over here and I say join user underscore T, right? Now I've joined the two tables together, but it has to know where to associate those records to. So the way we can do that, oops, is I can say on, and we're going to say where person dot ID is equal to user underscore T dot person underscore ID. And what that should do, uh, I'm also going to alias these so it knows which check. Uh, uh, table to pull these uh, these columns from, and same thing here. All right. So now if I go and query this, now I'm pulling back the record. So one of the things that's also nice about uh, relational databases here is like there may be a case where okay, well maybe I don't have a user record associated with this. I still want to get the person related to that if there isn't a as, you know, if there isn't a record in the username table. And the way we can do that is we can uh, use a, a left join. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, I want to make a left join. And now you can see here, I'm actually returning all of the records. And where I don't have a matching uh, user record, it just returns back a null for that. And that's because the person has the precedence here because it is the left uh, table in the join. So now I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to Visual Studio Code. And what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to query uh, this data out of, uh, out of this person table that I just created. And so what I'm doing here is I have already imported in this uh, PG module. The PG module is the Postgres module. And the way you can install that is you can say npm install PG and then uh, if you want to store it to the package, make sure the dependency gets saved into the package.json, you can just do dash dash save. So the way we'd write that out, let me kind of blow this up so we can see this a little bit better. The way I do that is I would say, and oops, I would say npm i for install pg, and we're going to say dash dash save, and this will install uh, the Postgres module into our uh, into our project. So now that I have that, what I'm going to do, let's see if I can't minimize this here. There we go. And I have this in here. What I want to be able to do is I want to be able to query this. And so the way that's going to work is now they've imported in this PG module, uh, what I can do is I can grab the pool object off of the PG module. And then what I'm doing here is I'm creating uh, the config parameters. And so this has the username and password here I'm using uh, for my test database. D don't use something like this in production, please. Uh, and then I'm pointing to my database and I'm also pointing into uh, uh, to the password that I'm using. Uh, 
and then I'm specifying a port of 5432, which is what my uh, Postgres database is using. Once I've done that, uh, what I'm doing is I'm creating a new pool instance. And here I'm creating my SQL statement. So we saw this before. The one thing that's a little bit different from what we saw in Table Plus is here I'm using this $1. And the way you parameterize your SQL uh, in Postgres, or with the PG module in particular, is you used to use a dollar sign and then the number for uh, each parameter you want to have. So if you're going to have four parameters, you do dollar star one, dollar sign two, dollar sign three, dollar sign four. And then right here, uh, we can see here I'm taking that statement, I'm making a query against the pool. In this case, I only have one parameter here, so I just pass it here. And so each position in the array, if it's the first position or second position, let's say I have a second parameter, I'm going to use a dollar two for the second parameter. And then I'll use that when it's going to query. And when that comes back, this is going to turn back an object, a result object. And uh, there's a property in the result object called rows, which just has an array of objects, which is what's in your query. So here I have a first name, last name, and create date. And what this will do is this will actually return an object with those properties on it for each row. And then once I've done that, uh, I'm just going to print it out. And once I've printed that out, uh, I'm just going to end the pool here. So let's see if I can run this here real quick. Uh, I'm going to say node print all people. And in this case, uh, I set the active flag to false. There's only one inactive uh, member here. But if I come over here and I change this to true, and I go and run this, now I can see I've got two users that have come back. So it matches up with what's in the, the database right here. And come back. So it hopefully gives you a quick insight into uh, how you can query things inside of Postgres and then use it in your uh, in your your Node.js projects. You know, there's many different, you know, uh, uh, persistent stores that you can use. You can use Mongo. There's a ton of them out there. Um, but relational databases have been around a very long time, and they're actually very efficient and very quick. And so um, I just want to give a quick example of how that works. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you can give it a thumbs down, but please give it a thumbs up anyways. And then um, if you like this content, please subscribe to the channel. It helps uh, helps the algorithm. And with that, have a nice afternoon.